and peace from God our Father, through our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, our Good Shepherd. The psalm that is appointed for today is Psalm 23, which many of you perhaps even know by heart, written by King David in, in the Old Testament. And though you've heard it many times before, let me read it one more time for you as we begin our meditation today. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not be in want. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside quiet waters. He restores my soul. He guides me in paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil. My cup overflows. Surely goodness and love will follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. This is the Word of God. Dear fellow sheep of the Good Shepherd, what did your father do for a living? Or your mother? It's probably different for every single one of us. What kind of life did you grow up in when it came to the, the, the line of work that you knew is part of you? For me, and I think you maybe know this, it was hardware. My dad and my grandpa had a hardware store. So I grew up in the hardware store. I grew up when I was a little kid starting in the hardware store, doing all of the jobs that none of the other workers wanted to do in the back room, whatever that might be. It became part of who I am, I guess. We're products of our experience, aren't we, all of us? As different as they might be, kind of colors how we see life, what we know, what we think about. So King David is the um, author of this psalm, the, the most well-known king of Israel, and then his son Solomon as well. But Do you remember what King David grew up doing for a living? What his father before him had done, what his, what his family did. When Samuel came, to the house of Jesse, his father, in Bethlehem to anoint the next king of Israel, which was to be David. David wasn't there. He was out in the fields doing the grunt work that the brothers didn't want to do. And what was he doing? He was a shepherd. That's what he did. That's what his family did. They took care of sheep. They provided for and they protected sheep. That's what a shepherd does. So later, King David becomes king of Israel. He finds himself doing the exact same thing, though. Providing, protecting, as king. The great king of Israel always knew that he had a greater king. The one-time shepherd, part of his blood, knew that he had a shepherd. So when it comes time, by God's inspiration, for him to write some of the psalms, and in this most famous psalm, might actually be one of the most famous places in Scripture, even people that don't go to church tend to know it and recognize the words, he goes back to his roots, goes back to those days of providing and protecting, and the Lord, by inspiration, uses that picture that he knew so well. And you know what? Most of us here didn't grow up as shepherds. I don't know if anybody here ever raised sheep or did. Some, there might be one or two, but... We have no trouble understanding King David's background, that picture of a shepherd providing for and protecting. Because you know what? We have a good shepherd who provides and who protects. We have a good shepherd who provides. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside quiet waters. My cup overflows, David says. Shepherd's job when David was young was to provide for the sheep, kind of to lead them. They went on their own, these helpless animals, know how to navigate and get to the right places to know where the, where, where the food is, where the green pastures are, where the quiet streams are. It was the shepherd's job to walk among the flock and walk with them and to patiently and regularly guide them to the green pastures to the water. 
David recognized that. When he became king, he wasn't too proud to say, you know what, that's what I need to. And we're not too proud either, are we? In our lives, no matter how wealthy we are, no matter how we have maybe gained success in whatever part of our life or our career that we have, no matter how self-sufficient we might feel at times, are we too proud to say ever in our lives, are you or am I? No, to say that every good and perfect gift comes from above, coming down from the Father of the heavenly lights, that everything that we have, our ability, our strength, our health, our wealth, our opportunities to serve, our faith, our, our every life and breath daily need comes from a loving shepherd who provides. David knew that, you know it, I know it too. But David knew he was talking about something even bigger. When he says, um, he leads me beside quiet waters. Uh, he, he, he provides me the, the green pastures. My cup runneth over. He's not just talking about the, the physical blessings that you and I enjoy every single day of our lives. David's biggest concern was his, his soul, his need for forgiveness, his need for kindness and patience from above, his need for eternal security and this short life that is but a breath. So when he talks about the green pastures and uh, the still waters, why is it there? He restores my soul. The greatest blessing you and I have coming from the hand of our good shepherd Jesus is his voice. My, my sheep know my voice. They hear my voice and they know me and they follow me. Isn't it Jesus himself, the Lord of, of, of all creation, but also the Lord of the church that provides his word to his people and his word will not return empty? And how foolish it would be for sheep to walk away from the pasture or, from the, or to see the water and not drink, to, to ignore the word of God, to ignore the, 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 the sacrament in which the Lord brings himself to us with his love and his forgiveness. See, not only is Jesus the good shepherd who gives his voice the one who provides the word, he's the content of the word. Simple confirmation class question, just always kind of drill into the kids. Who's the main character of the Bible? What's it all about, right? It's, it's Jesus, isn't it? He's the content. The good shepherd who sacrificed himself for the sins of the world. That means your sins and mine too. Who laid down his life, but only to take it up again, as, as he says in John chapter 10 who cleanses and forgives and loves and provides. Thank God that we live in a place and a time. Thank God that we live in a, a time in history where that word of God is freely provided and not hampered by the forces of this world around us like it has been in places and it is in other places to this day. May we always treasure that spiritual food of the word that the shepherd provides. But a shepherd does not only provide the food, the shepherd protects David knew that as king. It was a tough job in those days. He's living out in the fields around Bethlehem. He knew what that was like. Grew up that way from young on. Employing his strength, employing his vigilance to protect the sheep, to keep them from being led astray or scattering or wandering or being attacked by something ferocious or Protect them from just being lazy and not getting up and finding the water. The shepherd's job was to protect the sheep. Sheep are helpless, helpless animals. It's a dangerous world out there for helpless animals. But the shepherd protects. So, David tells us that as he counted on the fact that his shepherd protects him, he wants everyone who reads his psalm to count on that fact as well. He took great comfort in that fact, and he does not only protect, um, he protects not only in good days, but in tough days as well. Even in the presence of mine enemies, I will not fear. And what's the greatest enemy that you or I might have, might we say? I don't know. 
But in the end, I don't know who all your enemies are. You don't have any enemies, but we're all going to face a big one, right? Our last day, death. The righteous judgment upon sin. Even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. Now, in the footnote of your Bible, if you look closely sometimes, you know, the, the, the translation of words sometimes could, what's the best way to, to, to get that across in English? In the footnote of your Bible, it'll say, even though I walk through the darkest valley, I will fear no evil. Because God is with us. There's lots of dark valleys in life, right? Death, we will walk through someday. There's lots of other dark valleys in life that we walk through. There's lots of dark valleys of sadness or confusion or irritation or, or outright trouble or burdens or our fears that, that we all run into day by day by day. Dark valleys. But David says, you know what? I will not fear because do you know what the theme verse is uh, of Psalm 23? If you had to crystallize it into the main verse, right in the middle, for you are with me. Whether the Christian is by the green pastures and the quiet waters of good times in life, or whether they're walking through dark valleys of whatever time in life, the shepherd is with us, for you are with me. Had an interesting conversation yesterday. Had a lot of conversations. Family that um, came in and, and um, were in church on Thursday and requoted this whole thing to me as I was about to try to quote it to them. About, yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, and remember the darkest valley, whatever else might be, the burdens that are on people that are not in the shadow of the death valley. I was about to try to quote that because I knew they were in church Thursday. But they quoted it to me, so I thought that was pretty good. Because... Um, Totally unexpectedly, in his sleep in the middle of the night, the husband died. Uh, so they were coming in to talk about that. And I thought I'd better comfort them with the last words that he heard in church when he was sitting here on Thursday. They already got it out for me. Through the darkest valley that that family now will face, right? Through the valley of the shadow of death that he just faced. But no fear, no fear, no fear, because you are with me. We know that in our lives, don't we? So King David knew it. And why was he so concerned about the, the patience of God, the love of God, the forgiveness of God? Why was David so concerned about that? Because he also know, knew what you and I know. He knew what, what real sin was like, what a real heavy conscience was like, what real burdens were like. We don't have to go through all of David's failings in life, all of David's... Um, Problems because you and I all have our own. But he needed to know that God was still with him. He needed to know that sinner that he was, just like I need to know the sinner that I am, and you need to know as well that a patient, loving shepherd who, like a lamb before the shearers was silent, gave himself for you and for me and for David. And he said, I will not fear, for thou art with me. So I don't know, you know, if, if, if for a living, did, you don't have to raise your hands, but did any of you follow in your father and mother's footsteps, and are any of you doing the exact same thing your father or mother once did? Some of you, right? Are some of your children kind of doing the same thing that, that, that you? Maybe, maybe not. All of that really doesn't matter all that much. The examples that we leave them and if they follow them completely. But this does matter. The example of faith in our Lord Jesus Christ that we set, that does matter, right? And as we live our lives like King David, whatever we do for a living, as we live our lives like King David, in the good times, trusting in the valleys that are dark, trusting and knowing that it's our Savior, our Shepherd Jesus who is with us, as we live and conduct our lives that way, 
we will leave a good path, right, for our children to follow. And young and old and, well, whatever else there is besides that, everyone will be able to say, surely goodness and love will follow me all the days of my life. And like our brother now fallen asleep just yesterday, I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Amen.